Hello world, this is Lockpicking Dev. Now some of you know, or have seen, I've done a lot of resin projects lately. So I'd figure I'd show you how I've done them. And I'd show you by um, uh, demonstrating by showing the uh, the 3D model, uh, lock model displays that I've created and the molds I've created out of them. So with my uh, 3D printer that I make molds out of, um, I use resin 3D printing and I like it because it's super accurate and it's just faster and um, I just like it more. And with that, um, that means I have to use a different type of silicone when starting. If I was just doing an FDM printer, uh, the normal that just goes around and uh, lays stuff as it goes, then I'd only really need a what's called a 15A silicone rubber. And since I don't use the FDM, the resin, after you're done printing, if you have a resin printer, you notice it leaves off gases. There are a lot of gases that come from the printer or um, when you're printing. And so that fumes and stuff. So it still happens and gases still evaporate after it's done printing as well. So with these resin prints, because it's still always evaporating gases, you have to start with a platinum silicone and it's called a 25A platinum silicone. And it looks really blue. And if you've ever been to a dentist and had a mold of your teeth done, it looks just exactly like that blue silicone they use there and so to to do um, molds out to resin models you need to start with the platinum 25a silicone first and then after that you can do um, molds out of the resulting uh, cast in 15a silicone again if you have just fdm printer you can do 15 uh, 15A silicone rubber, but the resin absolutely needs the 25A platinum silicone um, for this project. And I mentioned that uh, that platinum silicone is often blue, but sometimes it's not. It can be white too. So like right here, I have two different ones. So the one on the right, this is my first mold I made of. This is a clear resin that I used. You see it has a little blip right there, so I had to uh, modify the mold for this one there. And so I used a clear resin for this one and I made it in my uh, platinum mold here. And these platinum molds actually last for a little bit. They don't last as long as the um, 15A rubber, but they do last for a little bit, but they tear sooner. When you're pouring, you have to be careful because sometimes it can go over the edge like right here. So when I'm pulling this up, you can see I have a little extra here. So it's something that can happen when you're pouring. So you have to be careful with it. I always add a little bit on top when I'm pouring because sometimes, or a lot of times, the uh, resin will uh, start to shrink after it's poured. It'll start to um, kind of settle down in the mold more. So there we go. There's my resulting mold from my uh, platinum silicone right there. You see I poured just a little bit too much there, so what I'll do is I can break off that, and then I'll just sand that off there. And then, again, after I get one of my... Uh, I have my platinum silicone. Instead of keep bef before this one goes bad, I'll take a resulting one, make sure it looks all good. So you can see that there's that little bitty hole there still. A little hard to see, that little bitty defect there. What I'll do is sand this one down, make sure that defect, everything looks perfectly good here after this one. And then I will make a mold out of it in the 15A silicone because this is much more durable, much more flexible, and will last a lot longer than the um, 25A platinum silicone. So again, you can see it looks like I poured a little bit too much here. So I'll have to go back and um, stand off the bottom here and work with that stuff there. So when I'm working with resin and doing a resin printer, that's how I do it. I do a um, the initial mold of my 3D print inside of my platinum silicone here. When, this, when the mold's finished, I make a fresh mold out of resin. That resulting mold, I will make sure it looks perfectly good and then make... Um, uh, a new mold out of the uh, 15A silicone that's much more durable because this mold will last and this one will tear sooner and I have already torn some of these molds. So yeah, there's some of those. Let me show you what it looks like if you don't use that type of silicone when you're doing the resin. So if you go straight to the 15A with resin, um, so if if I was casting this, I made this out of resin, and I casted it. This is what it looked like when I pulled it out. You can see how it tore a lot of that up there. It doesn't look flat. 
it's a little hard to get it on camera here, but it does not look good. That's torn silicone right there. And so the resulting mold of it, when I, I went ahead and cast it anyway to see what it looked like, the resulting resin mold looks like this. You can see it's just all that right there is torn up. That's because of that gases. Those gases inside of here, when this is in here like this, these gases just keep releasing and releasing, and everywhere that it's touching, it'll get really stuck to the surface of this, or most of the time what happens is it never cures at all, and it's very, very, very slimy. So when you pull it out, you don't even want to touch it with your fingers because it's just still very liquidy. So when you're doing a resin mold, again, this one is the 15A rubber. I know it's the same color as, as these other ones back here, but I just didn't add a dye to it. This is the 15A rubber that I used on resin, and you can see that when I did that, it made it look like crap. So avoid that. It's really, really hard to get a good cast out of resin with 15A rubber. And um, the only time that's ever worked for me was when I had my resin followers that have been sitting out for over a year to degas. De so let me show you a couple of the other things that I've uh, made here just real quick. So a little Euro, Euro display. Pull it out. You can see something you got to be careful for is when you're pouring nice and make sure you're going nice and slow because to the front part here right there. If it'll focus for me please. There we go where it holds the key right there those little notches you can see bubbles got in right there and it didn't fully form that spot so this will be no good and um, when you're pouring as well uh, it's good to be aware of deep pours so this big mortise cylinder here um, if you, this is the deepest I go uh, for pouring just craft resin if you go any deeper and bigger than this, you might need to look for what's called a deep pour resin. The reason being, when they get deep like this, even when they get as deep as an American lock um, display like right here, they can get really warm. Um, that's part of the curing process. They'll get really warm and they'll heat up quite a bit. And so this works really well. Um, this size works really well. It's when it gets to about the size of the mortise or mogul cylinder size here, just to show you how hefty that is, that you might have to either do multiple pours. You can see I have half a pour here or get a deep pour. This half a pour here um, was just because I was running out of resin, but this is the biggest I can go with one single pour of craft resin without messing up my molds or um, my models. And so some other things here, you see I've got my 3D models back here that I've done. We'll move those out of the way. You can also do stuff like um, followers. So I have a follower here. I got it from the Huck set. It is a um, Euro follower with a pinning shoe hole. And so you just cast that um, with your uh, silicone. You can do that straight with 15A because it's not a, um, it doesn't release gases or anything. And when you're pull, pulling these out with these types of ones, you want to oh, get it on camera there. You kind of want to do a wiggle, not pull it straight out because it can tear that silicone to small little wiggles back and forth to allow it to get out so you don't tear that silicone. And there we go. Look at that. Perfect, clear Euro follower. And so um, with that, I also want to mention, because a lot of these... Um, silicone kits the kit i have for the silicones they come with bricks and this is how you do it you take your uh, model you uh, set up the bricks for how big you want it to be so uh, for how deep uh, your pore is going to be let's say uh, i want to cast a um a silicone mold out of this little tray right here so i really only need about two bricks here because i don't need to pour it that deep so that's how high the bricks are for it's for how deep you need your silicone and what you do is you wrap tape around it all around the insides here that way the silicone doesn't go through the cracks of the bricks there and when you're doing that i want to point out when you're in the corners here if i can get the focus try to make your um your tape overlap just a little bit in the corners here. That way there's no holes and stuff seeps through. 
and because this the silicone before it cures it will get through all these bricks and you can see underneath here how it is stuck in these and it really sucks to clean out if you're using these bricks to do that so make sure that that tapes really tight make sure it's overlapping so there's no extra uh, holes in there for it to seep through and before you add the tape on the bottom because that's what you do you put tape on the bottom that way you add your model in here like this that sticks to the tape on the bottom. I'll go ahead and do that, show you what it looks like. Like that, there we go. And your model sticks to the tape on the bottom like that and you pour your silicone on top. That's how the resulting um, mold comes out, like that. And so, before you put your tape on the bottom, this is something that I want to point out that might be worth trying uh, to help prevent all this leakage of the um, silicone is before you put the tape on the bottom, because the tape on the bottom needs to be sticky to hold your model right. See, someone out there, please try some silicone, or not silicone, um, acrylic spray. So my thought is, is, if you go in, since you have tape wrapped on the underneath all around the sides now, shoot this acrylic spray from the bottom, that way it's not getting on the bricks at the top. All around the inside here, maybe it'll seal up those holes a little bit more, and that way you won't get all this leaking like I do. And then when you take it off, all that just comes off with this tape and you have way less of a mess to clean up. Cause trust me, this stuff really, really sucks. You can see this, that is silicone stuck inside of there. Really sucks to clean up and it sticks <laughs> everywhere. So I'm wondering if silicone spray would help that out or not silicone, uh, shoot, acrylic spray would help that out. Cause um, acrylic sprays, very much like uh, resin here. So yeah, that's how you do the silicone molds. The instructions are on the silicone. Uh, they come on the bottles themselves. I just figured I'd describe it uh, myself just in case there's something in there that wasn't obvious, especially for what we're dis displaying here today. So that's it with those. Next, I want to show things to look out for, um, or even before that, here's something you can do with these molds, you can add stuff in them to make them look different. So this was just a whole bunch of aluminum, uh, ground up aluminum that I found. I threw up and, uh, or mixed up in some resin and made some models out of, so just some stuff you can do like that. Um, things to look out for when you're making your molds. This is uh, an important lesson that I've learned. So initially when I made casts out of these little Huck uh, plug holders here, I did them face down like this. So it, when I pulled this out of here, I'd pull it straight up like this. So you can see this would kind of grip that down there. It doesn't quite work out too well. And over time, uh, pulling this in and out, this ends here, these corners here would rip the silicone just ever so slightly. And you can see that in some of these models here. Here we go, right there. Focus right there, right at the tip there. You can see how all that's right there. That's from pulling these out of this mold so much that that starts to uh, tear and then it starts to leave marks on your uh, models. So orientation is very important. And what I did was instead of doing this, I made new molds facing them this way instead of upside down. And so now when I pull it out, I don't have any of those tear problems. You just have to be careful the way you pull it out. You have to kind of orientate it like that, pull it a little bit, and again, wiggle, because that part right there is still really kind of stuck in there. But you can see when I start wiggling it, there we go, comes out perfect. There we go. And now, you can see that one's perfect. There are no blemishes on this at all. And you can even notice that this other one here the corners are messed up. There we go. The corner right there is messed up. That corner is messed up. You can see how perfectly circular that corner is and that hole is. Those are air bubbles. And that is, again, from using this upside down model as opposed to the sideway model. So something to experiment with. If you're having trouble with a model and it's giving you issues and you're pulling it out, maybe try a different orientation and that will work better for you. Another quick thing that just kind of show you what's possible. So these are SFIC actuators. I 3D printed this one and so you can see this It copied it really well There we go. You can see it works or it copied really well 
So that worked really well. What's not possible though, is here's another type of SFIC actuator that I wanted to make a mold out of, but it is too deep. These holes right here are far too deep. And so the, um, the silicone going down in these molds and these holes here wouldn't pull out that easy and they get stuck and break off in there. So this would not be quite possible to make a mold out of. So I skipped out of this. And to show you another kind of uh, a thing you can do as well. So I made a mold out of my, um, my follower stand here. And I don't like this hole right there. It's just, it was part of the model that I printed off of and I don't use this hole for anything. So when I made a mold of it, what I did was, so here's the mold I made. That little hole right there that was right in, that was this little peg right here that was made for this hole, I cut it off. That way, I wouldn't have this hole over here. So I cut it off right there so I wouldn't have the hole over there. And so you can see that reflecting on the model that I cast from it. So you got this little messy spot right here as long as well as right here. And these spots right here are just from the magnet right there. So what I'm gonna do is even though this model isn't perfect, I don't like it, I do like I did before. I went ahead and made this mold anyway because I knew it'd be messed up, but I wanted to do it so my future castings would be easier and I'm not casting this material. But now I can take this and I can completely modify it. I can smooth it out, sand it down, get this to look perfect the way I want it, draw, <laughs> draw, drill new holes in it. I'll probably put a new hole in it right here to hold something else, maybe one in the middle, and then I will cast it again. That way it'll be perfectly smooth and it'll make a good model. and It'll be exactly the way I want it to. So once you have a resin cast out of anything like this, a, a resin model is typically a craft resin model, not a 3D printing resin. A craft resin model is a lot easier to cast than um, um, the other stuff. So if I have a decent craft resin model, I will modify this and then uh, I will make a mold out of this. So that's what I'm doing with this. That way I can make a whole bunch of nice um, plug follower displays. Here are some of the Locksport projects I've been working on. Here are um, some resin picks I've made. Here is my keys and skulls one. Many of you have probably already seen. Um, turned out great. I made a few of these. we will probably make some more in the future there. Uh, just gorgeous. Uh, love it. Um, also the googly eye pick. Oops, dropped it. <laughs> it is glow in the dark. So with a black light, it'll uh, glow pretty well, especially. Um, yes, the googly eyes work. You can hear them shaking around in there. And a the most recent project of mine that I really like was this, um, it's a cutaway key, uh, keying uh, pin stacks here. And what I did was uh, for this completely clear um, model here is I made a little flag tray. And so you saw this earlier in the video and that's what this is for. It's to line those pins up with the key there. That way we can make a model out of it. And so if I zoom in on this here, you can see that right here is our like the grooves for the pinning tray here is where the separation of the pins here. So the shear line. So that's where the top pin will rest right there and the bottom pin rests below it. And that keeps them all lined up. So what I did is I designed this 3D model and I made it uh, really shallow here and make it go a little bit higher back there. Ooh. That way the pins would uh, stay in place, not roll around. That way the key fits perfectly right there. And I add that little line right there to create that shear line for. If it'll stay focus, but that is the resulting um, model right there. So here is the mold. And so here's the result. These come out perfectly clear. Ooh, there we go. As you can see, perfectly clear. And then I take a um, the same uh, 3D printing resin, resin I have, I take that clear resin and I take a UV um, a black light and I sit there and I place all these little pieces on it. So I place the um, springs, the pins, and the key, line them all up and uh, stick them on the uh, little flag, uh, pinning flag I have here to hold it all. And then I um, hit it with the black light that it all stays in place. Once I do that, I stick it inside of here. 
And all this is is just a big square. That way, that fits directly inside of there. And we pour the rest of our resin, our craft resin, on top of that to finish it off. Again, really slow to prevent any bubbles. And what I did to make this part of it is I just printed off the perfect, perfect size square, the same size as my, just a little bit bigger than my pinning flag here. That way, when it fits in there, you can see that it fits right inside there perfectly with a little bit of room. But I printed this off and I made a part and I made a mold out of that. That way, so long story short, what I did was, so I designed a tray for a purpose that I wanted to do. I uh, glued everything to it with clear resin, clear UV resin. You do that with the black light and you can see that you can't see that UV resin in here with this craft resin. It's really hard to see it. If you hit it with the black light, you can probably see it. But I glued on here at that. And then I stick it in here and pour the rest of the resin on top of it. So just some thoughts and ideas that, uh, you know, could get your uh, mind jogging. I'd really like to do this with a, uh, a Medico and sidebars, kind of like an exploded uh, kind of thing, because you can see this is thick enough for that. All right, and before I go, I'm gonna show just a couple other projects I did, and I have a reason behind this. So, I have a lot of pets. Um, I have mantids, jumping spiders. Um, I only have one left of each. Uh, when they've passed away, they have all lived great lives. When they passed away, I cast them in resin. Jezebel here lived a full life. She is gorgeous. She was, she was, oh, she had a personality to her. She was great. Here's Devil. He's another different type of mantis. Um, this is my first jumping spider back here. Her name is Akasha. And I cast her with a begonia flower and leaf. And it's not actually this big. The resin makes them pop and look bigger. So that's something that's cool with the resin. Kind of like with our key model here. It makes it pop a little bit more when it's deep enough. But um, there's that. Also her babies here that I did raise. You got two of them on top of mushroom here on some moss. And a mushroom that I did pick from outside. This is all from nature. And this is a pitcher plant. Um, so these plants right here, you can see the mouth at the top here. Uh, bugs climb in there and this plant will close and eat them. Along with some lichen and moss. And... With these, one thing I had to keep in mind when I was doing these right here specifically was everything needs to be very dry. Nothing can be wet at all. It all needs to be completely dried out, completely, period. There can't be any wetness in it. So keep that in mind. So with our model here, with our key, this is no problem because it's all metal. As long as it's dried off, I hit everything with the dryer out of principle, then we're good to go. I hope this helped. I hope there's more ideas, um, specifically ideas like this where people create, oh, you know what, I can just design something like this, I'll make a mold out of it, and then I will, you know, stick my stuff to it with clear UV resin, and then I will cast it and res it again, and we get something like this. I think there's a lot that we could do with these kinds of ideas. These projects were a lot of fun. <clears throat> I hope this video helped uh, jog your mind a little bit, and I hope something comes out of it. All right, everyone. Thanks for watching.